Trivia Hour, and I am Jeff, Judge Jeff, and I'm hanging out here with uh, Mr. Thorin Thompson. Hey, Thorin. Hello, Jeff. Uh, so, does it look like we're streaming? Do you see it on the on the stream? It, it does look like we're streaming. Perfect. So, for those of you who are wondering what the hell it is that we're doing, or what the heck we're doing, I'm sure hell's okay, um... What the heck we're doing? Uh, this is the Appendix and Trivia Hour that is happening between these two seminars. And we're going to be asking y'all a bunch of questions, a bunch of Appendix and Trivia questions. And whoever gets the most points by the end of this is going to win some cool prizes. That's right. Thorin, do you want to tell them a bit about the prizes? Uh, well, uh, one of the prizes is uh, a copy of Sky Cream's Blame. Um, written by yours truly here, uh, as well as, um, as, well as a, uh, a graphic list poster art of uh, Stefan Pogue's uh, cover of the Adventure Michael that only 30 prints were made of these particular ones. That's really cool. And also the winner of this challenge is going to get a bunch of really cool printer proofs from Goodman Games. So you're going to be getting a bunch of the cover printer proofs from various products uh, that Joseph has collected throughout the years, and he'll be sending those off to you as well. And throughout this hour, we're probably going to have some special guests pop in as well. So Thorin, let's go ahead and chat with you about uh, your history with the Appendix N. How did you come across this as a concept? Um, I mean... I think the same way a lot of people did. Uh, I, I looked in the Dungeon Master's Guide <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and, um, you know, at first I probably didn't pay much attention to it because I was, uh, I don't know, 10 or something, um, and I was reading other things. But eventually, down the line, um, I started picking up those books, and now it's, uh, it's kind of like an Indiana Jones treasure hunt. Every time I go to a used bookstore, I, I got to... I got to go find more Moorcock or, uh, you know, whatever I, I'm in need of at the time. So it's, it's definitely a, 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 an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Thorin, I am getting some word from the Dark Master himself that your, your microphone is a little quiet. So if there's any way uh, that you can either speak up or turn that up, that's probably going to be good for the stream here. Certainly. And for those who are wondering why we are just disembodied heads right now, um, I'm sorry, why we are just a Kahoot screen and there are no heads, is we're, screen, we're, we're going to be uh, just sharing the Kahoot uh, appendix and trivia game on the, on the stream. So we're just going to be a bunch of voices right now. Uh, so don't worry about any of that. And thank you. Welcome to, this, uh, to the game King Kothar and uh, Miklogic. And how do you think this other one is pronounced, Thorn? Is it Angheis? A Eric. Hi, Eric. Um, Eric. <laughs> That's an easy one. Oh, and here comes Hazu. Uh, Hazu. Yes, yes. Welcome to the game, fellas and ladies and gentlemen and everything in between. I'm a... Uh... Switching mics here, so I'll be offline for just a second. No worries. And just to let everybody know, the way this is going to work is we're probably going to start the questions maybe a little bit around, a little bit after 8.05, uh, just to give everybody a chance to kind of get in here who wants to play. But the great thing is anybody who is interested in playing if you um, come into the stream a little bit later, you're also able to hop into the game at any point. Uh, the points are cumulative, so there's definitely an advantage to getting in there early. All right, how do I sound now? Ooh, that's good. All right, this is a fancy one. So uh, Why didn't you start with the fancy one, man? Uh, I don't know. I've been using <laughs> the other one, and it seemed uh, to be working, you know, for the past uh, couple days. So. <laughs> nice. Well, I was just letting our folks on the stream know that we'll be starting up the questions in, an, in another minute or two. Fantastic. So chatting about the Appendix N, you were sharing with us your Appendix N origin story. Now, you said that you had seen it in the AD&D Dungeon Master's Guide uh, back in the day. 
Does this mean that you started with AD and D? Uh, I did. Um, kind of a, a cross between first and second edition is what my my dad uh, introduced me to. So a little bit of here, a little bit of there, and uh, I uh, for my birthday I got a second edition starter kit with like the plastic dice bag in it. Ooh. And then uh, yeah, and eventually uh, one of the first purchases when eBay first happened was uh the complete set of uh first edition books and uh, i think i paid 80 bucks for all of them at the time oh that's and, cool uh, yeah and so i was just swimming in in D, &D at like age 10 through 12 so uh <laughs> it's and it's uh, stuck ever since <laughs> that's awesome and more and more people are uh, coming into the stream so welcome to uh darkwood and sean ski Brute Squad John and Picoto. Yeah. So maybe since we've had a couple of people hop in here in the last, say, 30 to 45 seconds, maybe we'll give it another minute or two before we start. Sounds good. So what about I've, you? Uh, when uh, did you first figure out uh, Appendix in there? Well, yeah. I started gaming in 1990. And at that point, second edition was brand new. So that's where I started. I started with, with AD&D second edition. And I didn't really start exploring the um, original first edition of AD&D until kind of the fourth edition backlash. So right. once the fourth edition backlash came around, I got really interested in the, um, the advanced Dungeons and Dragons uh, players, players manual, dungeon master's guide. And that's when I started like really kind of like, especially going through all those crazy appendices in the back with like your ridiculous tables with like this, where you can like roll on your random streetwalkers table. You can like encounter the slovenly troll, this sl slovenly troll is I think. Yeah. Anyways, a uh, lot of, a lot of uh, ridiculousness in the back of that. And so that's how I became aware of it. But once I got into dungeon crawl classics, uh, knowing that the Appendix N was such a foundational part of the design around Dungeon Crawl Classics, it got me inspired to actually start exploring this stuff. Cool. Yeah, man. Well, I think we've got a nice base group here to start working with. So we're going to go ahead and start up this, this trivia party uh, just to let everybody know how this is going to work. Uh, you should be logged into Kahoot either on your mobile device or your, your, your desktop. Um, I will say from my own experience, uh, usually logging in by, by a desktop is a little more reliable. Sometimes with the mobile version, it can get kind of, it can, it can freeze up sometimes. Uh, so if you're using the mobile version and it does freeze up, just refresh your screen. You'll still have an opportunity to answer. But I do want to let people know that the faster you answer a question, if your answer is right, the higher points you're going to get. So it's good to answer correctly and to answer quickly. And also with each question, there's going to be a picture on the screen that is going to slowly appear. And that picture may or may not be a useful hint as to the answer. Moon Glum. I'm loving these references. Nice. Nice. All right, Thorin, should we go ahead and start this? Let's do it. All right, 11 players. Oh, man. Oh, Domod. All right, the Appendix N Trivia Hour. What is our first question going to be? <laughs> what book does the Appendix N appear in? We're, we're, we're throwing you an easy one here. Uh-oh. Is this the original Dungeons & Dragons set? The Dungeons & Dragons basic set, the Holmes version? The AD&D Dungeon Master's Guide? or the expert set Moldvay version? We've got six answers in. All right, so it looks like five people answered correctly with the Dungeon Master's Guide, and one person thought it was in the OD&D set. All right, so we've got 11 people signed up, um, and only six answered. So there is a chance, and I, sh I should also probably point out, that there is probably about a two or three second delay between what um, what I'm seeing on my end and what's being streamed on Twitch. So one kind of uh, insider tip, 
is it might look like you have slightly more time than you really do. So get those answers in as quick as you can. All right, so going next, who's in the lead? King Kothar. Nice, we've got King Kothar in the lead. All right. So moving on to the next question. By what name does the protagonist in Who Fears the Devil always refer to himself? Hmm. So this is kind of, this is potentially kind of a trick question. All right. Because he's referred yeah, I, to. I, I don't in, even know this answer. Yeah. <laughs> he's referred to, in, referred to in multiple different ways by fans and by the author himself. But the character only refers to himself in one way, and that's just plain old John. So good job, two of y'all. Uh, Silver John is how Manly um, is how Manly Wade Wellman refers to the character uh, when he writes about him. But actually, in the stories, he's never called Silver John. At least not in Who Fears the Devil. Uh, John the Balladeer is actually the title, the the name for the character that Manly Wade Wellman didn't actually particularly care for, and that was used in later collections. And nobody thought it was John the Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> now, Thorin. Nobody, nobody goes to church. <laughs> Thorin, have you read these stories? Uh, no, I've got a couple in my shelf here. Uh, the Old Gods Waken and uh, Worst Things Waiting. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just waiting, waiting for me to read them. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on over to our next question. Oh, Pakoto took the lead with that one. Nice job, Pakoto. But Moonglum is right behind you. Question number three. Dorian Hawkmoon and his wife go searching for their children in this Michael Moorcock book. <clears throat> so I haven't made it to the Hawkmoon stories myself yet. I've only done Elric so far, but I'm excited to eventually meet Hawkmoon and his, and his no, family. I I haven't done Hawk Moon yet either. I've done uh, Ericos and Elric and uh, Corum. Looks like five out of our 12 got the correct answer nice. with the quest for Tantalorn. Uh Two of these books are not even part of the series. The Queen of Swords is part of the, the Swords trilogy, and The Sailor on the Seas of Fate is, of course, an Elric story. So if you at least know what stories are Hawk Moon or not, um, <laughs> that gave you a 50-50 shot. Definitely. <laughs> okay. King Kothar took the lead again. Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> Question four. This author is considered by many to be a major literary influence on D&D, &D, but is not listed in the Appendix N. Oh. Let's see if they get this one. Everybody should get this one. Yeah, this is also kind of a softball one. But I say that with no shade towards anybody who might get this one wrong. I do. <laughs> All the judgment from Thorne. All right, not bad. Eight out of 12 nice, nice. got the correct okay. answer. Yeah. Good job. I would say that, you know, well, you know, Lovecraft is an influence, but it's true. He's not a huge influence. More so with Call of Cthulhu than D&D. And I could also see why somebody would think that Lovecraft wouldn't be an official member of of the list, uh, mm -hmm. just because his stuff is not really explicitly fantasy, except for maybe like elements of the dream cycle. But yeah. So King Kothar is in our lead, and we are going into question number five. In this story, Prospero and Roger Bacon shrink down and sail away in a model ship. Hmm. Now, Thorne, without giving out the answer, do you know what it is? Um, no. No. I do not. Ooh. Um, I have, I have not read any of these stories that are listed. <laughs> well, the, the bulk of people did answer it correctly. Uh, we've got four answers for the face and the frost. Uh, but yes, the face and the frost, we've got two wacky wizards uh, who end up facing some Lovecraftian uh, baddies. Um, and yeah, one of the ways they get away from the house originally, initially, is they shrink down and climb into a model ship. And then I think they end up going through like a, like a, like a, 
like almost like a sewage drain in the basement. Spoilers, man. Spoilers. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bel Air is kind of hard to find um, out there in the wild. Face in the Frost is, um, I, I found it to be one of the ones that was easier for me to get my hands on in a used bookstore than some of the other ones. Mm. So although King Kothar, it looks like, did not get that one correct, or maybe he did, um, but he's still in the lead. All right, King Kothar. And we've got Moonglum in second place. Right. People who are showing their literary influences in their screen names. So who appeared in Wonder Woman issue 202 alongside Catwoman? Oh, Is it Elric, Conan, Kothar, or Fafford and the Grey Mouser? I'm waiting for the picture. <laughs> Oh, and now you can almost... Oh, there we go. Oh, it yeah. says it right there on the screen now. What a weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 70s comics are pretty wild. Are you much of a comics fan? Me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you read the Conan comics? I did. I, I haven't read the one with Elric in it yet. Oh, I'm getting a message that the Zoom invite is not working for someone. Um, oh. who's probably going to be joining us. I'm not sure who that somebody is because I don't recognize this phone number. But <laughs> let me go ahead and find that invite link. Special guest locked out of the portals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, how do I get this? Okay, copy invite. <laughs> Um, so while I'm looking this up, uh, uh, why don't you, um, Thor and tell us, what are you reading right now? If anything, uh, well, I, I, I just started a ace double, uh, feature of, uh, both Jack Vance. It's got the last castle and the dragon masters. Um, so pretty good, uh, ace double there. And, uh, last night I actually finished, um, what is it? The, uh, Tower at the Edge of Time by Lynn Carter. Oh, cool. Nice little sword and sorcery slash science romp. Look at that email list. <laughs> Looking good. Three spam. I, you know, I like that you keep your spam pretty clear. Oh, geez. Yes, I'm, I'm showing everybody that. I'm so sorry. You are. You are. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm showing my, my, my... Let's close all that out. Um, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right. No well, problem. uh, whoever that is who messaged us, one of our potential special guests now has the link, hopefully. So we can go ahead and move on from here. Fantastic. Um, now who's in the lead? King Kothar followed by Moonglum. Boom. Yeah. King Kothar is killing it, man. Ooh. Who is if... this King Kothar? How does Tarzan get to the Earth's core? Mm. Is it by quicksand, trireme, dirigible, or submarine? That is a good question. And now that the picture is appearing, it's a little more obvious. And the answer is dirigible! Nice. Yes, yes. Um, two people... Uh, potentially fell for my trick. I very intentionally picked a picture that as it came into, um, as it came in, it might also look like a submarine. <clears throat> I was very tricksy. You very tricksy. <laughs> All right. So now, oh yes, we have a special guest who's waiting to come in. Good job, King Kothar, for that high answer, five streaks. And it looks like we've got a special guest with us right now. Who's our special guest? Who could it be? Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, this is Michael Curtis coming to you live from Cyclops Con 1 here to do some uh, appendix and trivia, correct? Is that going, that's what's going on? Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Are, I, you, are you watching the stream right now? Do you get to see the questions? I, I see uh, I see a blue screen. I see apparently King Kothar is uh, kicking butt. So Yes, King um, Kothar is in the lead. Moonglum is uh, shortly behind. Okay. Well, that's after. usually the case with Moonglow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, question number eight: 
what Appendix and Authors miniatures game was hugely influential on wargaming? So, Michael Curtis, you don't want to answer this one out loud yet because we want to give our players a chance to answer this uh, on their own devices. But I'm curious, looking at this question, do you happen to know what the answer is? Is this something you're, you do? Yep. I can't wait for the answer myself. I don't know the answer. Yes, it's Fletcher Pratt's Naval War Game. All right. Now, I thought I, I was pretty proud of myself for some of these answers. Paul Anderson's The Crusader Game. That seems possible, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even Robert E. Howard's Mexican-American War Game. Like, I could see that happening. <laughs> in parallel universe. <laughs> and, and don't forget, of course, uh, uh, Fritz Leiber and uh, Harry Otto Fisher's Lankmar War Game. Did they really Absolutely. have one? Yeah. Whoa! I did not know that. I don't know. Because I, cause I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for keeping us honest. So next up, oh, let's see. King Kothar is slaying it, man. Good job, King Kothar. Question number nine. Mana Yud Shushai is the creator of the universe and this mythos. Mm. Yes. So, Mr. Curtis, are you familiar with Mana Yud Shushai? Oh, yes. yes, I am. How about you, Thorin? Uh, no, but I could take a stab. Yeah? I don't want to say anything out loud right now. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yes, was your stab correct? It was. Yep. Yes. The sign, the sign of Mung. <laughs> <laughs> this is some good stuff here. Yeah, I highly... If you haven't read any Lord Dunsany and you have like 15 minutes free... I mean, look up some of that Pagana stuff because each of these stories are about a paragraph. And they are fantastically entertaining. I just finished his uh, King of Elfland's Daughter recently. Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. Excellent. So, Michael, what are you reading right now? Uh, right now, I'm actually reading um, the, uh, the Eternal Champion, the first uh, volume in the Michael Moorcock collection that White Wolf put out in the 90s. He basically took the hit, like all of Moorcock's, there's like 14 volumes, uh, all of Mark, Moorcock's various Eternal Champion stories and mm -hmm. published them all in omnibus format. So this is the uh, the Erikos or the Erikose, depending on how you want to pronounce those umlauts on the last E. And uh, I'm reading that. I'm reading The Warm Ouroboros right now. So I'm assuming that this is your way of telling us that Goodman Games has procured the Elric Stormbringer license and that you are beginning your work on that box set. Let's not start. <laughs> hey, you heard it here first. I <laughs> felt... I fell into I fell into British uh, in British uh, science fiction and fantasy through I started looking through some old white dwarfs and now uh, he just fell down a rabbit hole. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Those are cool collections to find too. I've got a couple uh, sitting on my shelf, and every time I see them, I gotta snag them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's look at our next question here. Oh, who's in the lead now? Still King Kothar, um, Moonglum, Ooh. and Ray Otis are doing a great job here. You got though Shansky moving on up though. Yeah, he's sneaking up. Question number 10. After World War III, Brazil emerges as the Earth's most powerful nation in this series. Hmm. I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I realized, so when I first built these questions, I had a, I had a joke answer in each one. Uh, and I took those out, but apparently I left that one in. I still have Stephanie Meyer's The Twilight Saga in there as a joke answer. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you did. But, oh, wow, this is the first time in the quiz so far that the majority of players got this one wrong. See, I was going to guess that one, that answer too, actually. It okay. Like, I guess because the world of tears just sounds like something that, you know, would take place after World War Three. I don't know. Sure. Uh, Michael, are you familiar with Viagens Interplanetarius? No, I'm not. I, I, I but I, I knew that I knew what it was by process of elimination. Yeah, and and also the name being very clearly kind of a, a Portuguese sounding and looking name also helps. Right. Let's see what happened here. Any upsets? Oh, Shansky is falling a little behind. He mm. went from fourth to fifth, but that means Pakoto is sneaking up, so that's cool. All right, so what do we have next here? 
Which Barsoom book refers to John Carter's granddaughter? So the title of this book is referring to his granddaughter. Um, Thorin, have you read any Barsoom books yet? Uh, no, I'm ashamed to say I have not. You don't need to feel shame. I've not yet read them either. I'm just working my way through Pellucidar right now. Um, Mike, have you read all of the Barsoom or just some? I've just read some of them. Yeah. I know the answer is not the chess men of Mars. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, his granddaughter is not the chess men. <laughs> it looks like our, our players had an even split between Thuvia, maid of Mars, and Lana of Gathal, but it's it's Lana. All right. And what uh, what book, what number is this in the series? Oh, Lana of Gathal is a much, much later one. I, I, I can't say the exact, I don't know the exact number of it, but it's it's... I believe it's the penultimate one. Mm. I think it's the last one that was published in Burroughs' lifetime. Um, I think it was published right, and I think it's um, chronologically right before John Carter of Mars, which is kind of that collection of uh, random short pieces. Right. Now, Michael, do you have a particularly a, 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 a favorite Barsoom story? Um, I really know the first six. Um, I like, I like, of course, the Princess of Mars, but I'm forgetting the. I think it's the gods. Is it the gods of Mars? I think it's like the third or the fourth one, where basically um, John goes to the southern continent, and uh, they basically figures out, like, you know, like the. It really gets into like the religious, um, the, the religious culture of Mars, which, uh, which turns out to be bumpkis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. And also, can we just point out that King Kothar is on a winning streak right now and has nine correct answers in a row. And that's another thing that's interesting about Kahoot is the more and more, it, not only do you get more points by answering quick, you also get cumulatively more and more points if you answer correct questions in a row. Mm. So our buddy King Kothar is killing it. I'm wondering if you know this person. All right. So next question, who hasn't written a Conan story? Me. <laughs> Me yes. neither. Is it Michael Curtis? Is it uh, Thor? <laughs> no, it's Andrew Offit, Edgar Rice Burroughs, Paul Anderson, and Lynn Carter. <clears throat> who are three people who have never been in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all of our answers are in. And it's Edgar Rice Burroughs. Yes. And do you guys like how I timed it so that um, as the picture was being pixelated, the very last pixel to be revealed was the little one that said Tarzan? I did. I felt <laughs> attention to detail, which makes you an award-winning podcast. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Okay, King Kothar still slaying. Oh, but Dwarless just went up three ranks. So cool! Mm. Congratulations to Dwarless. Shansky is moving up. He is. Throw. He is. Ray Otis is right behind him now. There's like a less than a forty-point difference between the two. Question 13. This is the trickier one. Which statement about Jack Vance's The Dying Earth is true? Does Taseus steal a tapestry from the demon Blickdack? Is Leon the Wayfarer sacrificed to the demon Blickdack? Is Leon the Wayfarer cursed to look like a demon by the wizard Pandaloom? Or is Taseus an artificial woman created by the wizard Pandaloom? Yes. <laughs> oh my god! Everybody who answered answered correctly. Wow. That is awesome. I have never been more proud in my life than I am right now of the people playing this game. Because that's a, that's, a, that's a tough question. Did you guys know the answer to that one? Uh, I got stuck on the wizard pantaloons. I was, you know, I thought there was something else going on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, unfortunately, I, uh, I have the second book and I don't have the first book, so I haven't read it yet. <laughs> oh, they're both fantastic, but they're, they're very different in tone. Mm. All right. King Kothar's still in the lead, but Moonglum, he's got a streak of three now. Nice. Both of these are about miners harvesting contraterrene matter on asteroids. And Thorin, you're currently reading one of the books that are a part of the answer here, so you'll know if one is right or wrong. I will. I will. All right, so as Thorn can attest, it is not Jack Vance's uh, The Dragon Masters. Most certainly not. Wow, only two people got this answer correct. Is this going to break any big winning streaks? Um, let's see. Let's find out. 
Did anything happen? Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> and it must be the people below that. Uh, oh, you you yeah. might be right. Oh, interesting. It's not our. It's not our top five. Somebody it's not our top five. So up. this broke all of those streaks. Oh man, this was an upset. Monsieur Zenith the Albino was the inspiration for this character. Ooh. And Michael, you're welcome to keep hanging out with us. Uh, you're welcome to take off if you want as well. It's totally up to you. Uh, but while you're on here, is there anything that you're currently working on that you feel like the people who are on this stream should know about? Um, I, I, not really. I am in that nebulous, um, that other area of stuff that I do for Joe Goodman. <laughs> which is in, which is in appendix and um, you know oriented, more um, more five edition oriented. So um, I'm I'm working on something for that right now, but nothing has been announced. So oh okay cool cool. Yeah. So the answer was uh, Elric of Melnibide. It seems like most people figured that one out. So yeah. good job. Probably the word albino helped there. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Not a lot of albino characters in appendix and literature. <laughs> no, there's not. According to the Lancer Ace paperback chronology, Conan was younger in which of these Robert E. Howard penned stories? Mm. Ooh, I know that answer. Do you, Thorne? I think so. We'll find out. Yes, Tower of the Elephant. It's a very right. young Conan in that one. And actually, according to the Lancer Ace um, paperbacks, that is the youngest incarnation of Conan that was ever written by uh, Robert E. Howard. Really? According to their chronology, yeah. It's what, if about, you, what about the Frost the Frost Giant's daughter? If you look at the very first collection um, that's just entitled Conan, uh, the second story is uh, the Tower of the Elephant. The first story is one that's written by Elspring DeCamp and Lynn Carter. Okay, because I thought the, the, the Frost Giant's daughter took place while he was still in Samaria before he left there. So, all right. Well, I'm, not, I'm not a Conan, um, Conanologist. Well, and also, <laughs> this is based on their chronology. So that, that, that also means that it's not really based on anything other than what they think as well. So, <laughs> so I think your chronology is probably just as um, accurate yeah. as theirs. Yes. <laughs> just in my universe. There we go. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Who was nice. the firstborn author from the Appendix N? Ooh. Hmm. I think I might know. I wonder how many people are waiting for the face to show up in the picture before they vote. <laughs> I know that room anywhere. I don't need to say <laughs> I recognize that tiger rug. <laughs> oh, and I am so cruel because I wrote this question knowing that everybody would think it was Lord Lord Dunsany, but it's not. Edgar Rice Burroughs was born before Lord Dunsany. You know it, what? You you got me. Is it by like is it by like one day? <laughs> no, it's it's by like a good like five or six years, I think. Oh, okay. Wow. You're not that cruel. That's <laughs> No, but one thing I will say is uh, I, I had Hoy run through these questions with me just to make sure that these weren't too overly hard. And I thought I was going to get him with this one. He, 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 he got that one right. He got 47 out of 50 of these, though. So Hoy, Hoy did a very impressive job. Okay, Jordan Hammer moving up. Nice. What is the name of Belit's ship in Robert E. Howard's Queen of the Black Coast? Is it the Tigress, the Pantheress, the Leopardess, or the Lioness? I got this one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike, you don't need to worry. Thorin's got this one covered. It's cat related. <laughs> it's cat related. <laughs> the thumb tannic. <laughs> <laughs> the chunkress. The chunkress. <laughs> and Thorin, yeah, were you correct? I was correct. Nice. All right. King Kothar is still slaying it. Swinging frost fire around. An episode of Star Trek was based on a short story by this author. Oh, boy. <laughs> and this picture is actually from that episode. Hmm. Of course. Uh, 
Look at that beautiful kiss. <laughs> Such a tender moment in television history. The first interracial alien kiss. <laughs> wow, another upset. Only one person got that one right. Oh. All right. When the, we found, when the, we found the trekker. <laughs> When the Gorn shows up, that's my cue to leave. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to bail, guys. Thank you very much for having me on very briefly. And, uh, you know, have a, I'll, I'll see you guys virtually sometime soon. Awesome, buddy. Thanks for swinging by. Good luck. Bye, Michael. Have... Bye. All right. So I, I can see why a lot of people would have thought Lee Brackett, though, because she mm. did write one of the Star Wars movies. Mm. Mm. Not Star Trek, though. King Kothar was the only one to get that one right. Oh, man. Before Dr. Goodwin appeared in A. Merit's The Metal Monster, he was in this novel. Hmm. Well, process of elimination here. Yes. <laughs> only two of those are actually A. Merit stories, so that helps. <clears throat> I don't actually, and I haven't read either of those stories, so it would be a 50-50 split. I have to call a friend. <laughs> <laughs> it was the moon pool. All right. All right, King Kothar is back with another answer streak of three. Leotis is uh, showing back up again. 14th century Englishmen hijack a spaceship in this story. Now, Thorin, if you've not read this one yet, I really recommend that you read it. It's really, I, really very fun. I have it on my shelf. So I'm guessing so, that means you know what the answer is. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Paul Anderson's The High Crusade. Very good, very good. A very entertaining read. Corwin next. is blinded and imprisoned by Eric in this installment of Roger Zelazny's Chronicle of Am Chronicles of Amber series. <clears throat> um, I have not read any of these, so... I have so far read the first two, and I'm quickly approaching the third. All right, look at the abs on Corwin in that picture. Mm, and uh, those blue jeans. And those blue jeans, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yes, Nine Princes in Amber. The majority is correct on that one. Good job. King Kothar has almost lapped Moonglum in points. Which of the following is not the name of an Ace Conan paperback? Hmm. And what's funny about this question is I came up with a lot of ones that sounded like fake ones and I would Google it and it would turn out to be the name of a different Conan story that somebody else wrote. So I really struggled to find one that was not one that was actually used by someone at some point. I can believe it. Conan the Corsair. All right. I would not have guessed that. <laughs> Which I one were you thinking? I, no, I, I just wouldn't know. I just guess randomly. So. Gotcha. <laughs> This book was first released in the 1930s. So only one of these four books came out of the 1930s. Which one is it? Hmm. I think I... Ooh, I don't know. Actually, I think I know. <laughs> <laughs> and your answer, Thorin? Oh, it had to be the Swords of Mars. Yes. Very good. And that was a split. The Fox Woman and Other Stories was actually published in the 40s. This Miskatonic University professor is the main protagonist in August Durlis, The Trail of Cthulhu. I definitely would Yeah, I definitely would not have been able to answer this one. This was me trying to come up with a good August Durlis question, but I, I would not have known this one. I will fully admit to that. And actually, I think this is one of the three that stumped Hoy as well, if I recall correctly. Mm. Yes, yeah, see, only one person crests this one. <laughs> now, is it going to be King Kothar? Find out. No, it was Shonsky! Shonsky! <laughs> Shonsky! Nice job, buddy. All right. Who is the artist for this cover? Now, Thorin, do you know your appendix and cover artists? Um, 
No, not as well as I probably should. Um, but I think I might take a stab at this one, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll. And when it's one, I'm going to say it's Michael. No, it's Gray no. Morrow. All right, the famed comic book artist. Michael did the ones for Elric, correct? I the, believe so. He's done a the, bunch. The Da books. Yes. Now, this author played Dungeons and Dragons with Gary Gygax and later wrote a novel set in Greyhawk. And that novel is all right. <laughs> I've heard very mixed things about it. <clears throat> I just I don't think I like uh, D D books like. Mm. <clears throat> oh, we must have a, a latecomer in the game because there are now thirteen answers to that question. Ooh, nice. Whoever has just joined, welcome. Welcome to the fold. All right. Who is the hero up. in Lynn Carter's The Barbarian of World's End? Now, I know, Thorin, you can at least cross off one of these. Um, yes, I can. Can you cross off more than one of them? Mm, no. <laughs> well, I know you well enough to know that there's one of these is a Tolkien name, and you can cross that one off. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is Ganelon Silvermane. Gorm is the psychic bear from Hyro's Journey, and Carson Napier is our protagonist in the Venus stories. Which author listed below was not a founding member of the Swordsmen and Sorcerers Guild of America? Three authors founded the Swordsman and Sorcerer's Guild of America. This is the, the one person who did not. And according to this picture, he has long, luscious locks. And by has, I mean it did in the 1970s. <laughs> yes, Carl Edward Rat Wagner. Good job, guys. This book features hippies in Berkeley, subterranean elves, and hallucinogenic grains. <clears throat> Sounds like college to me. <laughs> <laughs> and this book is also incredibly fun. Very fun. Hard to get your hands on, but very fun to read. Mm -hmm. well, I believe it was also one of your first uh, podcasts, was it not? It was. Margaret St. Clair's The Shadow People. And yeah, the Appendix N Book Club is uh, my, my podcast about the Appendix N, and my Spellburn co-host, Julian, was the guest for that episode. Which of these titular locations is on the planet Krishna? So the title of one of these books is a location that exists on a planet called Krishna. Mm. His ambition had lost his kingdom. Now it threatened an entire planet. It's the Tower of Xanid, which for some strange reason, I decided to include two questions from the Viagens Interplanetarianist series. Um, and this is also part of that. So only three folks got that one right. So that was a slightly trickier one. And King Kothar was one of them. King Kothar, I don't know who you are, but you are doing an incredible job here, buddy. I gotta see this guy's library. Which H.P. Lovecraft story features the esoteric order of Dagon? And I felt I was being very generous by not making Dagon one of the answers. Because <laughs> that is a story, but... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this should be an easy one, guys. Everybody <laughs> get this. Did everybody get it? No. Half of the people who voted got it. Hmm. The Dunwichar has oh, the cost. Dude, right. King Kothar didn't get that one. Oh, King Kothar. King Kothar. Man, I thought you knew stuff about the Appendix N. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just giving you a hard time because you're doing such an incredible job here. I'm 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 very impressed. Leave some answers for the rest of the <laughs> But Ray Otis got it right. So way to go, Ray. This Appendix N author was also a DC Comics writer who co-created the Flash and the Justice Society of America. Were you aware of this, Thorne? Um, no, I was not. 
Yes, one of these four authors was actually much more famous as a comic book writer. And yeah, he created he co-created The Flash. Hmm. Pretty well, wild. I'm, I'm interested to find out. And it's our buddy Gardner F. Fox. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> This was the first Lynn Carter. Re- this is the first book Lynn Carter released in his Ballantine Adult Fantasy series. So the Ballantine Adult Fantasy series was edited by Lynn Carter. Uh, it was kind of his um, his love child, and he. It was very important to him that this book was the first that was released in the series because this book was really important to him. I could take a stab, maybe. Were you right? Uh, no, I'm well, thinking it was Smith. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, the Clark Ashton Smith collection, Zikarf, was indeed part of the Ballantine Adult Fantasy series, but it was almost one of the last ones published, where the Blue Star was the very first. Okay, question 35. What is the name of the, inter- of the intrepid dreamer in H.P. Lovecraft's The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath? Now, I'm guessing you know this one, Thorin. I think I do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was a question submitted by our friend Thorne here. Um, so let's see if we can figure out who it is. Although I will say there's one answer I added in there. I, uh, <laughs> I added in Solar Pons, who is uh, an August Durlith uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes character. Most people got it right. It's a good job. Ooh, Jordan Hammer has taken second over Moonglow. And I want to remind everybody that there are uh, rewards for first and second place. Rewards. Awards? Uh, Awards. Uh, mm, sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the people who get first and second place will be getting the Sky of Crimson Flame package. So this is pretty exciting. So Jordan Hammer and Moonglow are duking that out. Elric of Bonebe's patron is this Lord of Hell. Could it be? I love that big smile that Ariox got in that picture. He just give away the. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was that was definitely a softball. Apparently, <laughs> ten out of eleven got that one. That's great. Mm. Philip Jose Farmer wrote stories in the Lost City of Opar, which originated in what series? I haven't read much of him either. Opar, huh? Yeah, the only Philip Jose Farmer I've read so far are the Maker of, um, or the uh, World of Tears series. So I've not read any of the Opar stories, but I was actually just chatting about these recently with somebody. They are part of the Tarzan universe. Hmm. Okay, Moonglum, taking the lead. Taking the second place lead. (laughs) Which of these novels takes place in a New York City crime lord's mansion? Hmm. Uh. And I've actually not read any of the four books in the answer. Have you read any of those four? Uh, No. I will be reading Fritz Leiber's The Big Time soon, but the answer is A. Merritt's Seven Footprints to Satan. Who is the mighty muscled warlock swordsman? Oh, well, that's me. <laughs> is the, it, answer, the answer is me, guys. Is it Gardner F. Fox's Kothar? Is it Gardner F. Fox's Thorin? <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Carter's Thongor? Lynn Carter's Jandar of Callisto? My bet is it's either Gardner F. Fox or Lynn Carter. (laughs) Yes, it is Kyrick. Ah. Kyrick is the mighty muscled warlock swordsman. Kothar is the barbarian swordsman. Very distinct difference there. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Who suggested to Fritz Leiber that he set the Fafford and Grey Master stories in a fictional city instead of a historic one? Now, if you were uh, backing uh, some Goodman Games Kickstarters recently, you might know the answer to this. 
Was this featured in one of the journals? Yes, it was. Ooh. H.P. Lovecraft, all but three. Got that one. Pretty good guy. Yeah, you guys are doing great here. So how are we doing on time? We've got 10 questions remaining in 10 minutes. We're good. Who are the enemies in Fred Saberhagen's Berserker series? Are they sentient, sentient crab people with a shared memory? Self-replicating machines? Interplanetary demon princes? Or invulnerable beings from the fifth dimension? Yes. <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> Just put them all together. <laughs> they are self-replicating machines. Nobody picked sentient crab people. Come on. The crab people get no love. I know, right? <laughs> Okay, yes. Next up. In Jack Williamson's One Against the Legion, what is the basilisk? Is the basilisk a ship, a monster, a man, or a weapon? And this is another one that I that Hoy got wrong, unfortunately. I also would not have been able to... This would have been a total guess for me. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I have not read this one yet. Yes, it is a man, and that is the only one nobody voted for. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this one was the ultimate uh, streak breaker. What story is about a great curved sword that lusts for blood? It is a great curved sword that lusts for blood. Is it the Black Flame, the Broken Sword, Stormbringer, or the Sword of Welleran? I could take one of these off the list. <laughs> yeah. Which one did you take off the list? Stormbringer. Oh, yep, yep. Because he's not curved and he lists for souls. True. Uh, yes, it's the Sword of Welleran. Oh, and King Kothar did not get that one, so Moonglum and Jordhammer are both sneaking up. The 1962 film Burn Witch Burn is based on this appendix and novel. Hmm. And it looks like one of the options is <laughs> A Merit's Burn, Burn Witch Burn. So am I is this the obvious one or am I playing some kind of a devious trick? What do you think, Thorne? Was that being obvious or playing a devious trick? Trick. Trick! Yes, it's Fritz Leiber's Conjure Wife. Uh, as a film, it just happened to be named something that is also the name of an Appendix N novel. What a quinky dink. What a quinky dink. Small World. I think that's what that song Small World was about, right? This story yeah. takes place in Spain. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> nice and concise. <laughs> takes place in Spain. Uh, ooh, I, I, I haven't read it yet, but I think I might know what it is maybe and when in spain be very wary of uh floating men in blue robes mm, i don't know what it is it's the charwoman shadow oh i guessed right oh hey <laughs> well only two other people guessed right for this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, both jordan hammer and moonglum got it so oh. second and third place are sneaking up on first better watch your back king kothar although we don't have very many questions left so we'll see in Jack Vance's Inferio, Giel and his three friends do this. Do they crash on a planet of three-part symbionts? Do they narrate the story from their Martian hospital beds? Do they hijack a space yacht? Or do they escape wandering doomsday weapons? Uh, I, gotta, I gotta guess. <laughs> What's your guess? The doomsday weapon. No, nope, nope. They hijack a no. space yacht. Yep. I remember the cover with the thing on it. So, <laughs> Oh, man. I want to go into a space yacht. <laughs> oh, Jordan Hammer got that one. He's sneaking up. In J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, this character delivers the killing blow to Smaug the dragon. Is it Bjorn? Is it our co-host for the evening, Thorin Oakenshield? Is it Bard or is it Bilbo Baggins? I'm guessing you know this one, Thorne. 
If people don't get this, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm done. I'm do you, walking away. Do you like the Rankin Brass Rankin Bass I picture? Do, I do. Better than the the feature film. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> uh, I firmly agree with you on that one. <laughs> I but, appreciate you guys thinking I killed the dragon, but it wasn't me. <laughs> but eight of the folks got barred. Okay, which of these is the title of a collection of Roger Zelazny stories? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Either. I, got, I got nothing. Everybody was waiting for the words to show up on the screen, <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, even so, only one person got it right. Wow. Okay. And that one person was Shonsky. Good job, Shonsky. Way to go. What are the names of Fafford and Greymaster's weapons? Frostfire and Glamdring, Frostfire and Cat's Claw, Grey Wand and Cat's Claw, or Glamdring and Grey Wand? And look at that Lankmar City of Adventure image. Very nice, very nice. That's Doug Kovacs, right? <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> okay, most folks got that one right too. Good job. We're nearing the end of this. This is the final question. Question 50 of 50. What is this a map of? Is this Moorcox the Young Kingdoms, Tolkien's Middle Earth, Liber's Naewon, or Howard's Hyborian Age? It's, it's obviously the Young Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously North Dakota. Oh, wow. Almost everybody got that one with Tolkien's Middle Earth. So we're going to find out now who won the Appendix N Trivia Hour. Burp, 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 burp. First place. Oh, third place, Moonglom. Good job, Moonglom. Nice. Second place, Jord Hammer. Yes. Right. And our winner, of course, the king himself. King Kothar. <laughs> um, there you go, everybody. Good job, everyone. So what I'm going to need to have happen here is I need King Kothar and Jord Hammer both to send me an email so that you can collect your prizes. Um, I guess the best way to do that would be to send me an email at appendixnbookclub at gmail.com. If you send me that email there, I can go ahead and set you up with your exciting prize packages. I believe you were getting a all-expenses-paid cruise to uh, – oh, wait, no. The cruise industry is shut down. I'm sorry. Uh, no cruises. Uh, but since you're not getting a cruise, what do we have again, Thorne? Uh, well, we have the Sky Crimson Flame uh, prize pack, um, which includes the module, some stickers, uh, a poster that only uh, I only printed 30 of, and uh, yeah. Incredibly cool. And that's going to both first and second place? That's going to both first and second place. And uh, first place is getting, uh, I forgot what they're getting. They're getting those. Uh, they're also getting a bunch of printer proofs from Joseph right. Goodman. So first place will actually be receiving two separate packages, one from Thorin and one from Joseph Goodman uh, with your prizes. And uh, so that's King Kothar and Jord Hammer. You'll be receiving your Thorin, uh, your package of Thorin goodies. That's right. All right. Well, thank you all so much for playing. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you haven't listened to the Appendix N Book Club, I highly recommend checking it out. If you haven't, if you have, because I mean, obviously it's amazing. Um, <laughs> and if you haven't played Sky of Crimson Flame, please do. It's a fantastic adventure. Uh, Thorin, how can folks find Sky of Crimson Flame and other things that you're up to online? Uh, well, uh, my Twitter is uh, Son of Thrain. Uh, that's S O N O V Thrain. Uh, and uh, you can go to uh, www.allnightpublishing.com to uh, find all the stuff I'm blogging about, which isn't very much because I've been lazy recently. And uh, <laughs> also purchase the adventure. Or you can find it on drivethroughrpg.com or uh, Goodman Games actually has uh, copies. And you can also get PDFs with those copies now. So. Amazing. So we've got another stream starting at 9 p.m. So this is probably our time for me to click this button here that says stop streaming. So Thorin, this has been really fun. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, no problem. All right. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.